Greetings, Church. Gracious welcome to you as we continue our time here together, going through the texts for this coming Sunday, as that has become our practice, our spiritual practice, as we dig into this. And today, uh, this Wednesday, is the time in which we make the turn in the week, in which normally we would be uh, begin our, our time together using a psalm that was appointed for the daily lectionary uh, for, for this Wednesday, which I believe is still Psalm 86. Well, today is the time in which we take a look at the psalm for the week, for the day, uh, coming up for the third Sunday after the Epiphany, and that is Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. So we will open up with that psalm as our prayer, and then we will take a look at it before we close with the prayer of the day. So let us calm our hearts before we begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a dilution. In the balances, they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, as I always say, I love opening with the Psalms because it becomes words for us, prayer for us. Being somebody who grew up in a free church, in the sense that we really didn't have a, 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 a liturgy, per se. Every church has a liturgy, has an order of the service that we always follow. You kind of know how the service is going to go. We, we never really had, you know, wrote prayers, written prayers, apart from maybe the, the Lord's Prayer. As I've gotten older, I've moved away from that, and when I became Lutheran, I, I found such joy, such pleasure in written prayers, texts that are gifted to us as words. Because so often I would do my, my extemporaneous prayer and I'd always end up praying for the same things. My kids are probably sick to death because we nine times out of 10 pray the same prayer every night when we have our nightly family Bible reading and prayer time together before everybody goes to bed. And so I think I'm gonna start doing something a little bit different. I don't know what yet. Uh, but we'll, we'll figure out something as far as a prayer for the end of the day, for the close of the day. So he, I love the Psalms. The Psalms are such a perfect fit for us because sometimes you can, you can always find a Psalm that fits your mood, that fits your needs, that, that, that fits what it is that your heart is yearning for, the crying out. And here you have the Psalm, Psalm 62, gifted to us. As, as a psalm of David to, to remind us of, of who God is. And it begins uh, with the same words twice. You know, in, verses, in, in, uh, in verse 1, For God alone my soul waits in silence, which we did not read because we started at verse 5. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him, hope being something that we cannot see, that we have to hope will be, that we, that we trust in him. Hope is always tied to faith, to trust that who God is is who God is going to be for me, for you, for all of us. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. That, that, that there's no other rock, there is no other salvation. There is no other name near heaven or earth, by which we must be saved. That, that he is our fortress, that we cannot be shaken because we stand upon him. We are, we are, we are being carried by him. We are, we are on his shoulders. 
On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. My honor resting in God. That that a lot of life is our pursuit of honor for ourselves, our pursuit of prestige for ourselves, our pursuit of all sorts of things. And yet here we are, we are uh, praying to God, crying out to God, making a proclamation from our hearts that, that all our honor rests upon him, that rests in him that any honor that we thought we could have apart from him does not exist. And that, that he is our mighty rock, he is our refuge, he's our place of hiding, he is our sanctuary. And then verse eight, something that we should probably have made our verse for, for 2020 and now even 2021, trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him, God is a refuge for us thinking of all the strife that we have in our country, thinking of the fact that today a new administration is going to be inaugurated. Do we trust in that administration? Have we placed our trust in that one? Or do we feel like we are betrayed because our trust was placed in another administration that is now not in power? Is that where we're placing our trust? Because I hate to tell you, but your vote is not going to be the winning vote every single time that your guy or gal may not win. Does that mean that God has failed? Does that mean that our hope has failed? Or do we trust in God knowing that he will use whoever is in power to do his will, to do his good for us and for others? And sometimes the things that upset us are because we think that our power, our hope, our honor, our, our, our trust needs to be placed in human beings, be placed in presidents and vice presidents and congress people and, and governors and courts, when it's actually in God. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are delusion, kind of hitting both sides of the spectrum. If you're poor, sorry, you're going to die. If you're rich, you're nuts, because you might think that, that your wealth is your life when you're not going to be able to take it with you. And the balances they go up, they're together lighter than a breath, meaning there's nothing that you have. The balances, meaning that, that you're going to be weighed and measured at the end of time, and there's nothing that you have that's going to make you, ooh, I weigh more, I'm awesome, I'm strong. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Whatever blessings that come to you, don't place your heart upon those blessings, but place your heart upon the one who blesses you. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, not to us, but to God. And steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. Steadfast love, meaning it cannot be shaken. For you repay to all according to their work. Meaning that what we receive from God is what we need and what is given to us which is Christ, his works. So that when God looks at us, he sees Christ. He doesn't see what it is that you or I do to make us better than the next person. Instead, he looks at you and he looks at me being children of God and he sees Christ. And those are the works that he repays to all according to their work, knowing that we are weak, that we are nothing, that we are breath. He knows that he must give himself to us in Jesus. And that's the gospel for us knowing that he upholds us by his right hand, which is Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit to make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. We'll see you tomorrow.